Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of our Flux Fractus node video. We're going through the hands-on process to set up one of these nodes on Proxmox. If you want to know the basic information of Fractus nodes, such as what it is, the requirements, and how much it earns, check out my part one video. I will have linked in the description below. So a while ago, I made a video showing how to set up multiple Flux nodes on a home server with Proxmox. If you need to set up Proxmox on a home server from scratch, Go ahead and check out that video. I'll also have that video in the description below. Since we already have our Proxmox set up, we're going to get it started. First, I want to show you what I'm running here. This is the same home server I'm running for this video. I do have another home server with 16 cores, 32 threads running nodes too, but that one does not have these hot swap storage bays. These ones, you can actually pop them out and plug in new drives without having to turn off your server. So you can keep that uptime. Alright guys, now we have logged into our Proxmox and we also have plugging our hard drive. So how do we see them here? So you can see that they have there are three of these, but these were pre-installed onto this home server. So in order to find your hard drive, click on your data center. And in this case, mine is called a P-Box. And then go look for disks. And once you click on disks, you will see all the disks plug into this server. So for me, you can see there are three SDA, SDB, and SDC with 12 TB storage. So I wanted to have something more than just 10 TB, uh, just in case during the installation requires me to create an additional partition for something like BIOS or whatsoever. So I have enough room to play with. Our Thunder 1 on the left storage right here is actually our SDA. So how do we pop up the other ones over here, right? We actually have to create them manually. Click, let's say on this SDC disk, 12 TB, do a wipe disk and we say yes it's currently wiped clean initialize this with gpt we need to go to directory and we can see thunder ones are already mounted that was the one i was talking about here on the left we're going to click on create directory click the drop down so there's the sdb and the sdb one is the partition that's 12 tb in sdb but in this case we just wiped sdc so we're going to do that use sdc choose sdc file system we're going to use exe4 thunder thunder Three. And since we already checked the box at storage, we're just going to do create and then we wait. All right, finally, it's done. It created a mount point automatically. And on the left side, we have Thunder 3. Now we need to create a VM, which is going to be our node. Click on create VM, give this ID 104, and we're going to give it the name of Fractus 01. Check start at boot. We don't care about the start shutdown order because it doesn't have any dependencies. And we'll click next. For OS, I actually have my disk iOS file stored in the SSD. I'm going to choose my SSD and it's a 2004 live server. Okay, you want to use 2004 for now. And go ahead and click next. What we want to change here is BIOS. So what's the problem with the normal BIOS, right? The problem here is since our disk size is so big, it's over 10 terabytes, a lot of times it will fail to boot. So in order to avoid that, we're going to choose UEFI. This will support the larger modern disk size, okay? And it says add EFI disk. We're going to be choosing Thunder 3. And leave the rest. Click next, disk size. So this is where we pick our disk. We want to pick Thunder 3. For disk size, normally we just need 10, 2, 4, zero but in this case we want to give it some extra so we're going to call it 10 300 so it'd be 10,300 gigabytes and click next we want four cores click next we also want eight gigabytes of ram so 8192 next we don't need to do anything with networking unless you have something strange set up and we're going to click next and i'm going to check the start after created because it's going to take a little bit to create and then i want it to start automatically and click finish so now it's going through the creation process this process may take about five to ten minutes depends on your disk speed and let's wait and we'll be back so now our node has started we double click on this and it will give us the option to install the operating system and here for language i'm going to choose English hit enter and scrolling down it gives us the option to update the installer we don't want to do that because then it will update our OS version and currently we're using the 2004 and we don't want to upgrade to 2204 so we're going to continue without updating language 
hit done. And now take a mental note of our IP. And for you, it's going to be different. We're going to need this IP to SSH into our node later. And done for proxy. I'm going to use the default mirror. And then here for disk, we're going to uncheck this LVM group. However, we're still going to use the entire disk and hit done. Let's take a look here. This is what I was saying earlier. And this is why we needed more than just 10 terabyte of hard drive. In this case, the operating system need to create a partition that's a little bit over one gigabytes. And if you only have 10 terabytes, your second partition is going to be just shine of 10 terabyte. However, for our Project Thunder Fractus node, the requirement is that in one single partition, you need at least 10 terabyte. And this is very important. And then go ahead and click done. Are you sure to continue? Yes, continue. And then you get to pick your name, username, host name and also your password and you need the username and password to log into ubuntu to set up your flux os later we're not going to use any ubuntu advantage token we do want to install open ssh server so check that box and then go to done go all the way to the bottom done and now we're going to have to wait for the operating system to install and update all the software that's in the os all right when that's done it gives us the option to reboot now we're going to hit that it will give us an error message all we need to do is hit enter all right now our ubuntu server is starting for the first time go ahead and close that window and start up our putty or whatever you want to ssh with and putting the ip address for the node and for me it's 192.168.46.49 click open click yes and then put in your username and password all right then the next step we're going to go to flux's official website and it has a basically a two-step installation process and first we need to log into our root account and then type in this bash command and we're going to copy this bash command without the double quote. Go back to putty and we need to type in sudo su. This will switch us from our current user to root. And you're going to need to type in your password again. Now we're in root. Go ahead, paste. You can, if you already copied, you just have to right click and then we'll paste that bash command to install the multi toolbox which will make our installation a lot easier all right now we're gonna hit number one install docker enter your username here which is the username you created for your ubuntu and for me the username is this and click ok it will quickly install all the packages needed for docker once that's done, it will ask you to switch to your normal user account and hit Y and type in clear. So we have a fresh interface. Step two, since we're back at our user account, we need to use our multi toolbox again. We copy this and go back to our SSH window, right click and hit enter. This brings us to multi toolbox. All right, so next step, we need to install Flux node. We're gonna hit number two. All right, then it's the same thing. You need your Flux node identity key. You can copy from your Zalcor, hit enter. You need your Clatter ID, also get from Zalcor. And you also need to have the index. For me, it is zero. And by the way, here's the output index you're looking at. Most people, it's zero. Copy your Zell ID and hit enter. So it says KDA Rewards. The thing is, KDA Rewards is no longer a thing. There is a recent announcement, but since this thing asked for it, we're going to put in one anyways. Next, it's going to ask you to download a bootstrap for the blockchain. And since it's really big, you can use a bootstrap. For me, I'm going to use the one that's in the script, which is going to rotate through a few ones and then pick the best one for you and hit OK. All right, now it's actively trying to download the blockchain bootstrap. This is going to take a little bit and you can see that it says Estimated time is about 18 minutes. Now it asks us if we want to auto update. Definitely for sure. Enable notification. I don't want notification. All right, now we got to wait for a little bit longer. Then we're going to see this restarting benchmark message. So we don't want it to start benchmark because we haven't set our network UPnP yet since we're running multiple nodes. We're going to press control C, clear the message. And we want to type multi tool box. This should bring up our multi toolbox and then number 14 okay set up multiple nodes with upmp okay so it says enable upmp mode we're going to hit enter pick up a port i'm going to pick 16197 and hit okay and ask if this is your router ip most of the time it's going to be yes since it auto detects 
And now it's going to restart Flux OS and redo the benchmark. And so we're going to have to wait. So once that's done, it's going to show you, okay, you can access Flux OS with this new address. After UPnP, we're going to bring up the multi tool box one more time. And this time we're going to go to option 11, Flux OS reconfiguration. And we want to enable Thunder mode, okay, which is number three. And we're going to hit OK enter and now it's going to restart service and it's going to rebench our node so we want to use this command flux bench cli get benchmarks and then when we check our benchmark we'll see that our benchmark is running and now we just have to wait for the benchmark to finish running you can also check out in your flux os right you can go down to benchmarks and then uh, get status it will tell you it is running finally after running our benchmark for the last time cumulus node status it's done benchmark and it does tell us uh, for some reason he thinks it's ssd and uh, probably because our uh, hard drive performance is actually very high as you can see here the write speed is 714 and this is pretty legit for a normal hard drive considering you know the requirement is 80 right down here it says thunder is true meaning we'll be paid that 15 percent additional rewards for project thunder frack this node and of course the last thing is that don't forget to go over to your zelcore edit your flux node and put in your ip and also your ports that you chose for your upnp and then click save and start the node all right guys this is it for everything if you got questions definitely feel free to reach out through my discord channel you can certainly also reach out to flux official channel to seek help and if you find this helpful please subscribe and like the video thank you very much i'll see you next time